Sunseeker 68 Sport Yacht is the first of a whole new breed of crossover boats for Sunseeker. The idea is to combine the sleek looks and sporty driving experience of the Predator series with the outside helm and the extra deck space of the Manhattan range. Compared to a Manhattan of similar size, there isn't quite so much space inside in the saloon, but the flip side is a much larger cockpit with plentiful seating and a full wet bar tucked underneath the staircase. By using a slatted grill rather than the step, it also means there's no change in levels between the outside cockpit and the inside saloon, creating a very nice flow between the two areas. The raised helm area gives you a real feeling of commanding this powerful ship, with big leather captain's chairs that lock you in place and a great view forward over that impressive dash display to the slender bow beyond. The angle of the wheel adjusts so that it's comfortable whether you're standing or seated, and the MTU throttles and the joysticks for the bow and stern thrusters are mounted on a separate little extension so they're ideally positioned next to the wheel. Although the opening sunroof of the Predator 68 has been swapped in flavour of a flybridge, there's still a large skylight overhead to light up the staircase leading down to the lower accommodation. Even the design of this companionway has been carefully thought through, with a sculptural feel to the cutout in the dash and the elegant curved handrail leading down to the cabins below. The galley is at the foot of the stairs and has sliding doors so the whole area can be shut off when it's not being used. The full beam owner's cabin is just as lavish as you'd expect of a craft of this size, with a dressing table on the starboard side, a large central berth facing towards the bows of the boat, and a comfortable settee on the port side. There's also a small walk-in wardrobe on the port side, as well as an ensuite bathroom to starboard. The forward VIP cabin is almost as generous as the owner's suite, and has an unusual two-door setup so that the ensuite bathroom can be used as a day heads by guests during the day, but then the whole area could be shut off to create a kind of mini apartment feel at night. A strip of glazing overhead and the usual hull side windows ensure there's plenty of natural light here. The third cabin has two single beds, but even here there's a small opening port and a decent sized hull window. There's also a hanging wardrobe and an ensuite bathroom. Even in this third guest cabin, which is probably going to be used by kids, the attention to detail in some of the woodwork is remarkable. But perhaps the most surprising thing about this boat is just how much space they've managed to cram onto the flybridge up top. This isn't just a nominal upper helm station, it's a full-size flybridge with two good seats, a really well-equipped helm station, including a little flip-up wind deflector to take the wind off your head, sun pads under the windscreen forward, a navigator's bench with room for two or three, and then a full-size dinette aft where you can happily seat the entire complement of guests around the big teak table. There's even a fully equipped wet bar, so you can't just eat your food up here, you can cook it as well. With the standard diesel engines, this boat is good for around 30 knots, but go for broke, fit the optional surface drives, and you should see a remarkable 45 knots from it.